All right, this is a follow-up video on the Bolin. I did a video some time ago, took a bit of criticism for criticizing the Bolin. The Bolin's a great time-tested knot. Uh, it was one of the first knots I learned as a Boy Scout. Everybody learned how to tie the Bolin one-handed for rescue. Assuming you wouldn't have one hand, you can tie that around your waist. It doesn't cinch, you get rescued. Guys in arbor culture use it all the time. And my criticism was that it may not be in its straight form the best knot for life support. Um, before I start doing some examples of making the bowline a great knot for life support, I'm going to reference what I'll call the barrel knot. I think it's called a barrel knot. Some people will call it a scaffold knot. Um, some people will call it a fisherman's knot, but it's basically a double overhand knot on the standing end of the loop. It's a great way to terminate any kind of a knot for a stopper knot. So I'll just reference to that so that I don't have to tie it a bunch of times. So here's your bowlin, your basic bowlin that people might tie. And then, to make it a good life support knot, they'll take this bowline and they'll put a Yosemite finish on it. And a Yosemite finish can be done a couple of ways. In this manner, it's tied to the right side of the uh, working side of the knot. Um, I think it can actually go both ways. If it's on the left side of the working side of that knot, it makes the Yosemite um, easier to visually see. Um, if it's tied on this side, that would be your typical way of tying the Yosemite finish. What happens, or what can happen, is once you've done that, if you're tossing this knot around in the tree, it's pretty easy for it to go out and then come back looking just like your bowline. There you have the collar on it, and you go, oh great, there's, there's my bowline back to me. Um, everything's good to go. You clip into it, and of course the bowline comes apart. So to mitigate some of that, and make the bowline a really good life support knot, we'll tie our regular bowline, and you wanna have enough tail to tie your stopper knots. Um, here's a couple ways to tie the stopper knot. Remember that barrel knot that I mentioned? You can take that barrel knot and tie it on the, um, the loop of the bowline. You can tie it on this side or you can tie it on the other side. I'll just throw one on there real quick so you can see what that looks like. But that would be the stopper knot tied on the uh, the loop of the bowline. Another way of doing that, again, that can go on either side of the loop. Another way to do that is to make your Yosemite finish, bring it up again on, on either side, and then when you get up here, tie the, um, the barrel knot up here. That way, if this other gets, ever gets dis misoriented, that double overhand knot will never come back through the collar of that bowline. Um, another way to do this is to take the tail of that bowline and bring it back through this way. I don't know if you can see that real well, but that comes back, doubles back over, and then goes through those two half turns of the bowline. And then again, if you want, you can finish it off with a double overhand knot on this part of the bowline or even on the other side. But right here, um, it makes a great termination for that knot. So those are the ways you can terminate this. Terminate the uh, Yosemite up above. You can bring it back through the knot and terminate it down here with a barrel knot. You can not do the Yosemite finish and put a barrel knot on either side of the loop 
and I think all of those make the Bolin a much more suitable life support knot. Now, personally, I don't use the Bolin that much, and I would probably prefer a figure eight. A figure eight is really easy to see visually. Most of the rock climbers really like it. So there's your figure eight. And if I'm gonna do the figure eight on a bite, say I'm making a canopy anchor, I'll make the follow through figure eight. And the follow through figure eight is just so easy. It just, it makes it, it makes it really easy to see and to do. So you basically just follow through your figure eight. It comes around, follows through, terminates, and there's your figure eight, running figure eight basically right there. Once again, if you really wanna make this secure, put a barrel knot up at the top. And that I would consider um, my choice over the Bolin when it came comes to life support. Is that good? Okay. It's good. It's raining. It is. I saw a couple drops. All right, this is uh, how we set up the zip line speed line. It's a little different than a regular zip line because you have total speed control whether the line that you're using for the zip line is vertical, horizontal, 45 degree angle, it doesn't make any difference because we're going to use the hitchhiker and the hitchhiker is perfect for descending on a line at any angle. So what we do is, first thing we do is we set our line up over our anchor and we're going to climb up on an SRT anchor. So what I do is send my line up and I would be doing this from the ground of course but I'll tie an alpine butterfly and when I tie this alpine butterfly I try to tie the eye fairly small so that it stays oriented. I'll put my slick pin through and make this connection. Now whenever you're sending up your slick pin you do want to see if there's an angle. You want to keep the pin side or the um, the, the end side away from contact. So that'll go up and here's my SRT climbing line. So I go up on an SRT climbing line. I get to that anchor where I'm going to be setting up my zip line and now I put in my lanyard and I take off the quickie. Now when you remove a quickie you don't have to take all the pins out. Just take all of them but leave the last one in there that way you never have to worry about losing that pin when you take it out. So I climb up and now I remove my Alpine Butterfly. Now what I want to do is convert that SRT into two SRT lines or in this case an SRT access rescue side and this side will be the independent uh, line used for the zip line. Now that the Alpine Butterfly is removed, I'll take a bite of the line I came up on and I'll make a figure eight on a bite for the bunny ears. And the great thing about the bunny ears is that now it takes and converts what was a single access line into two independent lines. One will be still used as an SRT access or rescue side and the other side will be used for the zip line. So we pass that up and over. Now what we do is we take our slick pin again And if you can see that, that gets connected back into the, the climbing lines. When that cinches up, it becomes the SRT access line, and this side becomes the zip line. And what I do, and I've already tied this on, but I'll just show you the hitchhiker with the, the quickie. Um, but this pin 
in the quickie with the hitchhiker makes for some really great tending because it will tend to rotate, um, but it's also perfectly symmetrical. And now this is all ready for the zip line. So then when the climber comes up, the access line will clip him in here, load the system, and they're ready to go down. So this quickie, the pin will rotate, it makes it really smooth. Even if the climber is moving back and forth and rotating this, it doesn't affect the symmetrical characteristics of that pin. And it's really smooth with the hitchhiker. And again, they can ascend, or I mean, they can descend at any angle um, and come down. But that's the zip line with the hitchhiker perhaps never to actually be produced. Um, but that's it. So SRT access line, the bunny ears to turn it into two separate uh, climbing lines and the hitchhiker with the quickie for the zip line descent.